the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. Powerful spring storms this morning are sweeping across the southern United States. At least four tornadoes hit Oklahoma Wednesday. About seven people were hurt. Other twisters touched down in Arkansas and Kansas. The massive storm system is on the move this morning. Heavy rain and flash flooding are forecast for the southeast through Friday. Manuel Bohorkas is in Tulsa, Oklahoma with a look at the damaging tornadoes. Manuel, good morning. Good morning. The heaviest damage here in Tulsa covers about a square mile, and you can see the power of the tornado right here where it knocked down the brick wall of this beauty supply store. Not only that, it lifted off the roof. There is now merchandise scattered everywhere here. A community center next door and a church down the street look about the same. It is on the ground at the quarries moving eastbound. Multiple tornadoes ripped across northeastern Oklahoma Wednesday evening. Here's the debris off of some roofs. I hope people are taking cover in this area as it continues to move. CBS affiliate KOTV captured the chaos from their helicopter. And we have it on the ground, debris out in this area. We can see some farm buildings and outbuildings right now. We have it on the ground, and this looks to be a little bit stronger than even earlier. On the ground, Violent winds pounded suburban neighborhoods, leveling houses and uprooting trees. An adult and three children were in this pickup truck when a tree crashed on top of it. The family was hospitalized with no major injuries. Tornado sirens rang out. I see a funnel plow, debris just going around in circles. Didi Gillespie says he had just two minutes to get to safety before one of the tornadoes hit. Boom, all the high winds just came through and just tore up everything, broke out windows. It was pretty intense. Trees snapped power lines. As many as 5,800 homes and businesses lost power. First responders have been searching homes through the night looking for survivors. So far, there are no reports of missing people. Four Tulsa schools have decided to cancel classes for today, and the National Weather Service will be on site trying to determine the intensity of those tornadoes by assessing damage on the ground like this. Two flight attendants are hurt this morning after the storms rocked their plane and forced an emergency landing. American Eagle Flight 3358 left Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport yesterday bound for Memphis. Passengers say the plane suddenly dropped, sending a drink cart flying on top of two crew members. It was actually two of them um, that had got hurt fairly. I mean, they were bleeding and stuff, and um, shortly after that, that drop that we had, um, the pilot got on and said that we had to make an emergency landing. No passengers were hurt. Now, shortly after that flight, our David Begno took another flight from Dallas to Memphis. He arrived safely and is there to show us how flooding and hail hit several states. David, good morning. Good morning. We were supposed to get in at 10 o'clock last night, but we didn't arrive until 3 a.m. this morning. Our pilot was mindful of what had happened on that earlier flight. And so after talking with a meteorologist and watching the radar, he kept pushing back our flight. The people on board our airline did not mind. Here in Memphis, there is no rain right now, but they've already set a record for the month of March. They got 2.73 inches of rain in six hours. It's the wettest March on record here. Just over the border in North Little Rock, Arkansas, a record 4.9 inches of rain fell in just under 24 hours. That sent rushing flood water over clogged roads, hampering drivers and creating dangerous conditions. Rescue crews dragged three people out of Rock Creek in the heart of Little Rock. They held onto a tree for safety after their car was swept away in the storm. All of it happening while high water rushed through parking lots, making even heavy dumpsters float away. Also overnight, a hailstorm rocked Kansas, crisscrossing the entire state. The barrage of ice, rain, and wind sent people outside and drivers scrambling. In Casode, Kansas, the wind whipped the rain into near blinding conditions. While in El Dorado, they had hail the size of tennis balls that smashed windows and pierced the walls of houses. One family's home was seriously damaged. Sounded like quarters on the roof to about 
golf ball size hail. It sounded like basically like a hurricane was outside the front door. And back here in Memphis, you are in the bullseye for today's severe weather threat. It starts in the Ohio Valley and extends down toward Louisiana. North Louisiana is where we were just three weeks ago. They saw flooding that they hadn't seen in more than 75 years. And now Louisiana will get more rain today. have been following this sinkhole growing all day long. Listen, we even did live cut-ins throughout most of the morning because we just didn't know how big it was going to get. But this perspective is absolutely incredible, taken from a drone by a local drone pilot, Adam Kimbrell. Now take a look at this video here. You can see where that white fence used to be, the sinkhole actually swallowing all of that, even taking out part of the road. And you see it looks like it's almost like a muddy pool there because there's so much water still at the bottom of that sinkhole. Uh, it gets us a lot closer than the chopper could have that drone video. And when we heard this sinkhole could be 100 feet wide and 60 feet deep, even near those mobile homes, we wanted to show you how deep that really is. From the first floor to the second floor here of our newsroom, that's about 20 feet. If crews are right, this sinkhole could be three times this depth. And check this out. A single wide mobile home is about 18 feet wide and 90 feet long. So if it's really as big as the crews do think it is, an entire mobile home could possibly fit inside. <laughs> A major dust storm caused a traffic accident in California. You can see all the dust there. It reduced visibility down to zero with winds at times blowing over 40 miles per hour. 15 vehicles were involved in this chain reaction crash. Police say 28 people were hurt near Lucerne Valley, which is about 100 miles east of Los Angeles. A oh, bridge collapse in eastern India has killed at least 10 people. It happened on a busy road in North Kolkata in Bengal state. These pictures show the moment the flyover came crashing down on top of cars. Many are feared to be trapped beneath that rubble. Rescue teams and firefighters are at the scene. Divya Gopalan has more from New Delhi. The main concern is that this has happened in a very busy area with commercial and residential complexes nearby. There's also a metro station and a market in the surrounding areas. Now, the construction area should have been cordoned off, but locals say there were no barricades. Uh, they often passed freely under the construction, and vehicles also were also parked under the bridge. Many people fear that there are people trapped in those vehicles under the debris. 
heavy machinery is needed for the search and rescue operation to lift heavy concrete and iron structures. They are on the way. Uh, the army, though, has arrived at the scene to help with the mission. There have been many questions about this bridge even before the accident. Um, it has been in construction for over six years with delays time and time again. And uh, the builders were under pressure to finish it off quickly. Now, politicians are also taking advantage of the situation. The chief minister is there. She's uh, stopped ca her campaigning uh, to be at the scene of the accident. But the politicians are pointing fingers at each other and playing the blame game, saying that it's irresponsibility and corruption that is behind the accident. Breaking news out of Japan this morning. An offshore earthquake has hit the Pacific coast of Japan spread to the center of that country near Osaka. No tsunami warnings have followed the six magnitude quake, at least at this point. There are no immediate reports of damage or injuries. Individual states are pushing for a cashless society where eventually everywhere on the planet will no longer need cash. The first country that is pushing for a cashless state is Denmark, with its Scandinavian neighbors, Norway and Sweden, is leading the global trend towards electronic money. South Korea is moving towards a cashless society and Australia is also pushing for a cashless society and the UK is pushing for a cashless society where people are already using contactless payments but many are concerned that it's going to greatly jeopardize the poor. The London Guardian said that we should fear a cashless society for as we already live in a world that is as far as the distribution of wealth is concerned about as unequal as it gets. It may even be as unequal as it's ever been. My worry is, the journalist said, if that a cashless society may exasperate inequality even further, well that's the aim. For the economic instability of the world is marginalizing groups in many Western societies where the poor are being greatly affected by the financial oligarchs and the next generation of young people, the millennials, are paralyzed by the global economic crisis. Even those in the media who have a deep knowledge of banking and international finance uses biblical language to describe the road that is leading us to a cashless society. They're taking it even further. We will need no card now, not even your phone, just your face. And they are pushing for a system to pay just using facial recognition. And while many observers can see where it is leading, the companies and their competitive nature see it as a great business venture that will increase great revenue in their kitty. On the surface, there seems to be a very intense tug of war between Western intelligence agencies and the tech companies. Well, that's what it looks like. When self-interest clash, it can create a friction and a heated storm. But as both are money-making information gathering agencies, they both have the same goals. Intelligence agencies who come under the name of SIGINT, that is Signals Intelligence, can easily tap into your phones. According to the German magazine Der Spiegel, for an agency like the NSA, the data storage units are a gold mine, combining in a single device almost all the information that would interest an intelligence agency, social contacts, details about the user's behavior and location, interests through search terms for example, photos and sometimes credit card numbers and passwords. Smartphones in short are a wonderful technical innovation but also a terrific opportunity to spy on people opening doors that even such a powerful organization as the NSA couldn't look behind until now. What is very interesting about that statement is that you have all these Christians teaching that the mark of the beast is a literal not a spiritual mark, a microchip that can track you, when they are telling us 
that they are already tracking you through the chips in your phone. Facebook is probably the biggest data gathering agency on earth and it is probably one of the most effective tools of gathering data. Even at the doors advise to use it to your advantage but don't let it use you when you give it too much personal information which includes your photos. And even if you do not have a smartphone or any social network site or app they can still monitor you. Google also an intelligence gathering system has tapped into the AI, the artificial intelligence side of things, making the future look very dystopian. And Apple has also tapped into that era, secretly buying up different Digitech companies to expand its own empire and integrate us all digitally, making us less social beings as God created us to be. But though it seems on one face she is in conflict with the intelligence community, she is the one leading the world into a cashless society. And she does not even hide it. She brags about it and is open that she will lead the world into a cashless society. DIA's iconic dark horse, unofficially known as Lucifer, will get a shade darker tomorrow night. In observance of Earth, Earth Hour, the airport will cut the lights at some of its landmarks. Now first, from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., DIA will turn off its LED sign along Pena Boulevard. At 8.30, Lucifer will go dark for one hour. The airport also encourages employees to turn off non-essential lighting. Earth Hour was created as a way to raise awareness about energy conservation. Tonight we hear from inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil about immortality and the exponential growth of technology. Uh, we're going to get to a point 10, 15 years from now where we're adding more time than is going by to our remaining life expectancy. People sometimes say that death gives meaning to life because it makes time short, but actually death is a great robber of meaning, of relationships, of knowledge. We're going to be able to overcome disease and aging. Most of our thinking will be non-biological. That'll be backed up. So part of it gets wiped away. You can recreate it and we'll be able to extend our lives indefinitely. I'd rather use that word than forever. All right, well, we may not be able to teleport just yet, but apparently we can holoport. Holoport, okay. Holoport. Digital reporter Alexander Bahu is here to explain what this new technology is and what's involved in virtual travel. Hello. That's right, hello. Microsoft is working on what they're calling holoportation. So it's like teleportation, but you physically aren't going anywhere, just your virtual self. Holoportation uses a type of 3D capture technology to transmit a model of you to anywhere around the world in real time. Well, some say corporations know more about each of us than the government ever will. And when it comes to new technologies, like biometrics, one expert says that uh, technology is advancing faster than our ability to contain it. Would you swallow this pill so you didn't have to remember another password or wear an electronic tattoo identifying you to get better deals? It's not sci-fi. These are real and it's just the beginning of a tech revolution. All kinds of things that we don't even think about, where we shop in the store, what things we pick up are starting to be recorded and analyzed. Tom Keenan of the Canadian Global Affairs Institute says biometric ID is advancing faster than our ability to contain it, and he calls it creepy. There's no way society can keep ahead of this. We've seen retinal scans in airports. Now even some U.S. schools use them to speed up cafeteria lines. Cars use them instead of keys. Banks are lining up to implement the technology at ATMs. It makes it easier for us, but also easier for the people who watch us. So somebody with enough data processing power, which is dirt cheap now, can go out there and follow everything that you do. Police use facial recognition software to scan huge banks of images, and they're testing ways to identify us just by the way we walk. Keenan says that technology will come to the store down the street. So next time you go into the Walmart, maybe it knows as you walk in there who you are, 
that you're pre-diabetic, et cetera, et cetera, and suddenly you start being manipulated. The company Nimi's wristbands use our heartbeat to identify us for finances, for passwords, for booking travel. Keenan worries we'll simply accept new technologies because it's easy without thinking hard about how others might use it. Controversy tonight over Robert De Niro's decision to pull a documentary from the Tribeca Film Festival. The documentary titled Vaxxed was slated to screen at the festival. The film was co-directed and written by Andrew Wakefield, who was stripped of his medical license after his studies linking autism to childhood vaccines were discredited. And the filmmakers say they have a First Amendment right for their views to be heard. Everything I've been telling my patients for the last 10 years has been based on a lie. Vaxxed has been axed from New York's Tribeca Film Festival. This trailer posted online is all that audiences can see of the documentary Vaxxed from cover-up to catastrophe. Who is stopping that story? Is it a corporate interest? I don't know. Why does Tribeca suddenly not want to tell this story? Why does, you know, I, I have nothing but respect for Robert De Niro and Tribeca, I can't imagine what type of pressure came down that would make them pull a movie that they were obviously behind in the beginning. The director and producer say they were not given an opportunity to appeal Tribeca's decision. They say it's an example of, quote, the power of corporate interests censoring free speech, art, and truth. you probably didn't learn in school but your kids probably will or already are same-sex marriage being part of a lesson plan for students across Colorado part of an anti-bias curriculum even for preschoolers Jeremy from the preschool level with same-sex couples featured in picture books all the way up to the high school level curriculums are changing and teachers are not afraid to talk about it homeless man in Fort Wayne is suing the city for what he says is a violation of homeless people's rights. He says the city is taking and destroying their property during sweeps of homeless camps. A spokesperson for the city of Fort Wayne says they've done 20 cleanups of homeless camps since 2011. Keith C. is calling those sweeps unconstitutional and discriminatory. He says their homeless camp sweeps are unconstitutional. They're taking their tents, coats, blankets, and other property. They're then destroying or throwing the stuff away with no chance to get it back. C says his grandfather's jacket was taken in a sweep last year. They're wrong. They're taking our personal property saying it's junk. To them it may be, but to us it's our life. Sally Seegerson has been working the streets for about four years as founder of Street Reach for the Homeless. She says one man she knows lost an irreplaceable Bible in a sweep. Facial recognition technology in the fight against terrorism. This week, ISIS claimed responsibility for a series of deadly bombings in Belgium that killed 34 people, including three suicide bombers. The attack spawned another manhunt and more questions about prevention only four months after the terrorist incidents in Paris. Facial recognition technology might help prevent such attacks, but it's a work in progress. So uh, there's been a real push to try and incorporate more and more of this what's called biometric data uh, into a record so that uh, it can be useful for law enforcement. That's what we're seeing here. We, uh, you know, as, as soon as these events happened, we had a very clear picture of uh, who law enforcement thought was in charge, uh, who, who they thought was uh, responsible for this terrible event. You had, you know, that, that, that scene, that picture that's now being blasted on televisions all around the world. But you know what's strange? when I talked to DHS about this, they pointed out that, hey, you might feel a little bit strange standing in line at a border crossing and surrendering your biometric uh, data to the government. That's, uh, you don't have to be somebody with ill uh, designs to feel weird about that, but we give away biometric ID. And is available for Seed Creek Hot Springs. A large group of subjects wearing turbans and chanting possibly have guns. 
Um, at one point, some of them uh, disappeared and, and uh, started shooting what sounded like large, uh, you know, like long gun um, type firearms. Caution or overreaction? San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies question more than a dozen men firing guns in the desert. Welcome back. I'm Jeff Vaughn. And I'm Pat Harvey. Now, the FBI is now looking further into this incident, even though deputies say no crime was committed. CBS While the Sheriff's Department has said the men didn't do anything wrong, the story is still gaining traction online, in part because of the Sheriff's radio traffic that describes the men and seemingly suspicious circumstances. There was a large group of uh, Middle Eastern males in their 20s. Um, they immediately grabbed their things and started hiking uh, away from the springs there. Uh, they were up all night chanting uh, all ox bar type stuff. Um, at one point, some of them uh, disappeared and, and uh, started shooting what sounded like large, uh, you know, like long gun. I think it's a terrible thing. I think it's it's just uh, insane that there would be, be that kind of tension in Southern California to, for that issue to happen. While the Sheriff's Department says everything checked out, the FBI is now taking a look because this all happened on federal land. San Bernardino County Sheriff say that no one was arrested and no crime was committed, all but one of the guns was registered. Reporting now. Good evening. The Education Department is being forced to send in security guards to deal with growing violence in our schools. It's happening more and more as schools try to protect teachers and students. Throwing punches, pulling hair and ripping clothing. Two young girls in a schoolyard brawl. This is a sign of the times in WA schools. It's become so bad at Kalgoorlie Boulder Community High School that the education department's been forced to send in security guards. Last week a teacher was attacked by a student at the school. It was the last straw. Kalgoorlie Boulder is also getting new hard to climb fencing to keep trouble out. Some Delta parents are in an uproar after atheist and satanic literature is to be distributed in high school and middle schools in their area. They're getting exposed not only to a big lesson about federal laws in our constitution, but also about differing points of view, which of course exists throughout the country and the world. SEPTA says it's located a group of young children seen on cell phone video attacking riders on the L train last week. <laughs> the language is so offensive, we can't broadcast it. The alleged aggressor is so young, we can't show you their faces. When you watch that video as a, as a parent and as a human being, um, you're alarmed for the well-being of those children. The video was from an incident the evening of March 24th. It shows who police say are four boys, likely just six to seven years old, cursing, hitting, and at one point even spitting at a passenger. The alleged victim, Patrick Coyle, posted the video on Facebook and wrote he started recording after the kids apparently slapped another woman. Tuesday, we showed it to some passengers on the Market L line. I was taken back, and, and you know, actually, we live in Baltimore, and you know, certainly we have our share of, of criminal stuff, but I have never seen anything like that with children of that age. The U.S. Capitol Visitor Center was crowded with spring tourists, many of them children, when a man pulled a handgun this afternoon. And with all this happening, security has been ramped up here in Massachusetts. State police are putting on extra patrols at the State House this evening. A wave of panic in Washington. Cell phone video captures the frantic moments after gunfire rang out inside the U.S. Capitol Visitor Center Monday afternoon. Officers just coming out from every direction with guns drawn. Get out, get out. There's a shooter. Uh, so we ran out of the building. Sources tell CBS News the suspect is 66-year-old Larry Dawson from Tennessee. A man with the same name had been ordered to stay away from Capitol grounds after he disrupted the House chamber last fall. Now it is worth noting that a man named Larry Dawson was arrested in Washington, D.C. last year. I have a video clip to show you here now from the U.S. House chamber last year. Listen very closely here. That's Dawson you hear shouting. <laughs> 
It goes very quickly. It's not easy to hear, but Dawson was arrested for interrupting that meeting of Congress in 2015. He can be heard shouting, I am a prophet of God. Now, remember that point. Here's more that we've uncovered about the local Middle Tennessee link. This out of Williamson County. I actually did a story back in 2003 on a man named Larry Dawson. Now, take a look. We have some video from the courtroom here, and there he is before a criminal court judge. Dawson was a former Williamson County school bus driver. He, we reported that he was arrested for harassing a teenage girl. And get this, we reported that Dawson claimed to be a prophet of God. Certainly, we have now heard that before. It was a troubling end to a man's trip to Hawaii. Federal officials say he created a big disturbance on a flight. Yeah, Joe, this one's a little bizarre. It all started with a man and his desire to do yoga, something we usually consider to be soothing, calming. But for one Korean national who chose to do yoga on the plane, turned out to be anything but calming. The man was vacationing here in Hawaii with his wife. Officials say the couple on the return flight from Honolulu to Japan this past Saturday when the man started yelling at crew members and then shoving and pushing his wife. They said the man didn't want to sit in his seat during the meal service, so he headed to the rear of the plane to do yoga and to meditate. But according to court documents, the man then tried to headbutt and bite some Marines. They happened to be passengers on the plane, and they were summoned in to try to help the man back to his seat. Well, in the end, it got so out of hand, the pilot turned the plane around and returned to Honolulu. The man was charged with interfering with a flight crew, and now he's spending a few extra days in Hawaii at the Federal Detention Center. Now, the man explained his behavior to the FBI. He said he was sleep deprived and claimed he didn't know he was supposed to listen to the flight crew's instructions. At six o'clock, we are learning about a possible motive for the man accused of throwing acid on his girlfriend. Gregory Marsman was charged in court today with several felonies, and he faces up to life in prison. Today, the victim's family says over the past two years, they've noticed him acting strange. 24-hour News 8's Heather Walker got a look inside the home where Marsman left notes referencing the devil. The house was torn apart. There were acid burns throughout the house in every room. I denounce God, have accepted Satan. That was one of the notes that were left behind by Marsman. There were more in his bedroom and a message on the fridge. So it looks like Today, a, the victim's son, Keith Nemeth, began cleaning up the mess. He says his mom, Cheryl Keach, had Marshman living with her for the past 10 years. And I've noticed the past, uh, probably the past couple of years, he's been a little bit... Um, a little bit more random. We begin tonight with the terrifying scene that played out late today for commuters at a Greyhound bus station in Richmond, Virginia. A chaotic and deadly scene, an active shooter at the station shortly before 3 p.m. Tonight, we've learned officers with the Virginia State Police were reportedly there for some sort of exercise. Tonight, the gunman is dead and at least two other people are being treated for injuries after a bizarre and tragic turn of events. As the SWAT team stood down, Virginia police officials would not be specific about what kind of exercise the officers were conducting this afternoon at that bus station before the shooting. Well, this story is getting a lot of attention right now on our 12 News Facebook page. It's a photo taken on Easter. Take a good look at it. It's of the large fountain in Fountain Hills, and it apparently... Look at that. It, it's in the shape of Jesus Christ. Well, a man by the name of Gary Johnson snapped the image on Sunday, and it's being shared all over social media tonight. It's not the first time an image similar to this has been captured and shared thousands of times. But God will bring every deed into judgment, Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved through faith. This is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness. For oh God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him 
will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. He who believes in the son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time. Please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out. And I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> You've sinned against God. Like I have. He calls us to love and obey him in everything we do. What we do in front of people, what we do in secret. Even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, he proved that. God became a man, Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell, and he's offering you and I eternal life. God can do anything. If you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus. If it's not too late, forgive me for my sins. Jesus is King. Jesus is King.